דבר אחד. הצלת המדינה, השגת הניצחון. אנחנו ממטירים על החמאס אש תופת. כבר חיסלנו אלפי מחבלים, וזאת רק ההתחלה. במקביל אנחנו נערכים לכניסה קרקעית. אני לא אפרט מתי, איך, כמה. אנחנו בני האור, הם בני החושך, והאור ינצח את החושך. אזרחי ישראל, השבעה באוקטובר היה יום שחור בתולדותינו. נברר עד תום מה קרה בגבול הדרום ובעוטף עזה. המחדל הזה ייבדק עד תום. כולם יצטרכו לתת תשובות, גם אני. אוקיי, אז עוד פעם, אני אומר... This seems pretty clear right that, mm. that we're, we're, he's creating this uh, dichotomy this this clear separation between uh, the people of light versus the people of darkness all the connotations that that has and then um, trying to justify this heavy bombing that that he's done uh, you know allegedly yeah. against Hamas but it's not really Hamas that he's uh, hitting alone it's, it's yeah. very much the, the civilian population and it was well. a later reference to Amalek yeah. as well right in the speech where he talks about the fact that they're the ones who in the Uh, religious terms they're meant to obliterate in a way Absolutely. because they seek to and, and kill everyone including their animals and yeah. you know the, all yeah. the people of, of Amalek um, because they're the enemy right so using that biblical terminology and then equating the Palestinian people and not just Hamas with with Amalek uh, I think that really gives a lot of uh, strength to the argument that you know what is taking place in Gaza is um, is genocidal mm. right would you agree with that? So in, ter- in some ways, perhaps, mm-hmm. um, I think that as we, uh, international lawyers, we have to be very, very annoying at this point when, <laughs> we talk, when we're talking about genocide. A lot of people think that there, it comes down to numbers. Mm-hmm. Oh, 30,000 people have died. Of course, it's genocide. The numbers don't matter. What has to be there is that genocidal intent. And I do think that that genocidal intent can be man- manifest by a pattern of conduct. And in terms of the pattern of conduct where you push them to the brink of famine, where you're starving them, where you are deliberately inflicting upon them conditions of life what to calculated to bring about their physical destruction yeah. in many ways we see that being carried out and also the notion that this has trickled down we see other videos of IDS soldiers saying we are the sons of light they're the sons of darkness yeah. and that does go back to very colonial terms of um, civilization versus savagery mm-hmm. and the the fact that they call us is I actually think that we should own that of yes we are the dark world and we threw <laughs> off the, the light world we had decolonization and yet we still have this entity which is suffering under it which also needs to to achieve that that statehood no, that's, thing, that's definitely an interesting way of looking yeah, at it yeah the thing that worries me about the genocide intent is that We know in the Bosnian genocide case that the, the threshold is very, very high for genocide. There has to be no other um, outcome. There yeah. has to be no other inference, right? It has to be very, very plausible that it's genocide. The, their statements, when they now seek to talk about the fact that we're, but we're talking about Hamas, we're not talking about the Palestinians, there are enough statements to suggest that they are talking about the Palestinians. What muddies the water a little bit for me is the displacement talk. Mm-hmm. Because displacement is very clearly not destruction. So for genocide, there has to be an intent to destroy. A clear inference of it not being genocide is open borders. Okay. So when you're saying push them into the Sinai, push them into Egypt, why can't Egypt take them? That is not genocide for me. Okay. Because um, when it came to the Rwandans, when the Hutus committed genocide against the Tutsis, you had waves and waves of driving them out in the 1950s. Then you finally had a peace agreement in 1993, which caused the genocide in some way because they were like, okay, we're not going to be able to get rid of them now. Close the borders, let's destroy. Wow. So yeah. even Israel, when it was trying Eichmann, he, they tried him for crimes after 1941 because initially the Nazis had a policy of get the Jews out of get rid of them yeah, they should be out yeah. of here open borders mm-hmm. is a very clear non-genocidal policy mm-hmm. then they closed the borders they're like now we're gonna destroy them so post 1941 he was tried only for crimes then the issue here though is amidst all of the talk about pushing them into the Sinai you bombed stuff on the Rafa border <laughs> as well so yeah, it is so, so, so it is still money that they might have is, uh, and, and the second uh, you know I, we want to be very clear here that we're not saying that this is not culpable. This yes, is, exactly. you know, this is, these yeah. are war crimes, right? They're, they're simply 
no other way uh, to, to look at it. it and just, crimes against humanity. And crimes against humanity, absolutely. It just it may not amount to this extremely high threshold of genocide. And, and I think the worry, the reason why I come at this with a lot of bated breath mm-hmm. and without saying outright that it is genocide, which a lot of people have done, and I, I do think some people are saying, well, if this isn't genocide, what is? And yeah. I, I have a lot of sympathy for that argument, is that if... We've seen that Darfur was not declared to be genocide by the mm-hmm. UN's Commission of Inquiry because they said counterinsurgency warfare can be brutal, it can be terrible, it can yeah. be crime against humanity, it doesn't always have to be genocide. Um, is the notion that if, the, if nothing changes on the facts of the ground up until the merit stage, the ICJ might say it's not genocide, it's a mere crime against humanity, it's something else, it's not genocide. And Israel will take that to be an exoneration. Yeah, that's the And way. everyone else will take that to be a failure of international law, which is what Mark Milanovic said. And I agree with that because then we'll say, no, this is international law. You've made an incredibly high threshold for the crime. Yeah. And you have politicos talking about genocide, not knowing what that is a legal term of art. And mm-hmm. so international lawyers are the ones who have to rein everyone back in and say, it is very particular category. It's not worse or less bad because it's genocide or it's crime against humanity or it's a war crime. It's very clear war crimes are being are occurring. Yeah. It's very clear that crimes against humanity are occurring. Does it rise to the level of it being genocide? In many ways, yes. In many ways, it's a bit murky. The I, I think much of the fixation on genocide is because of the case in the ICJ. And, yeah. the, and the only reason, um, again, that case has been brought is because you couldn't bring a case on war crimes and crimes against humanity because that's already started. An investigation yeah. already exists at yeah. the ICC. And that is the correct form for that, right? Yeah. And yeah. we're still awaiting those things. But in the meantime, this process by South Africa started um, at the ICJ. And what we saw there was, you know, everybody trying to, uh, or at least the South African side, trying to uh, argue that this is a genocide. And yeah. a lot of people, and, and you know, they, they have... Uh, I would say, you know, strong arguments there as well. Definitely. Um, yeah. And that the ICJ could go either way in this. But you're very, very right to say that the, the threshold has been established as very high, um, which, uh, you know, may not be, they may not be able to, to, to really discharge that, that, yeah. that illness here. And, and I do think if we had had a pronouncement already on the Rohingya Muslims case, yeah we might know a bit better what mm. the ICJ is looking for in terms of whether it's evolved. 2007 yeah. was a long time ago. Has international law now evolved for us to think that this is genocide? And even then, they only found genocide occurring in Srebrenica for a okay. number of factors, which is that you got rid of 8,000 military-aged men mm-hmm. and you pushed out women in a patriarchal society. How would they survive? And also, you left the old men, you left the young men, mm-hmm. but you got rid of these military-aged men. How would that society be able to regenerate? And it, it, you're, in a essence, destroying that society, that generation, um, that group. So the, the notion of having to fulfill those very, very high criteria, and again, South Africa only had this jurisdictional ground to go to the ICJ on. Yeah. So they had to, it, ha- it now has to be genocide, or we don't really, we're not going to see state responsibility for anything else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, individual think, criminal responsibility for everything, mm-hmm. but not state responsibility. Absolutely. And I think it also speaks uh, to some extent uh, at, the, at the failure of the IC, uh, ICC, right? Yes. Where they haven't been able to. You know, despite this this investigation starting several years back, right? Yeah. Um, this hasn't come to a point where you know even arrest warrants are out or any de- definitive statements are coming out. Um, the investigation seems to have stalled much mm. until probably October seventh yeah. onwards. Um, uh, and 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 so I think it's it's a it's a failure there, and that's why people have to use this argument, the genocide argument, to really push uh, much of this as well. Yeah, and I think I, I think it's quite astounding how much power the West does have over a number of UN institutions. So uh, a few years prior to all human rights organizations saying that what happen, what's happening is apartheid. Mm-hmm. Uh, a UN uh, economic and social committee said this is apartheid. And there was such huge backlash to that by the West and by Israel. They withdrew the report. They scrubbed it from their website. Wow. And you're just like, okay, this is the UN kowtowing to this majority and the fact that that does take place in a number of ways and and we see that repeatedly. The ICJ has been very good when it comes to Palestine and I think that Mm -hmm. the advisory opinion may be a very protective one hopefully in the um, similar to the Namibia 1971 opinion but in terms of is this genocide or not is it's a very complicated question and the court will have to grapple with all of that notwithstanding the fact that things might change on the ground. 
uh, when it came to Myanmar, Gambia, you had a, you you had UN report saying this is genocide. Mm-hmm. We don't have that. We don't have a fact finding commission uh, looking into that in Gaza yet. But we might have that by the time it comes to the merits. So um, we'll have to wait and see in terms of what. Uh, and the the ICJ is very willing to listen to what the, what the UN has to say. Yeah, absolutely. And I think they've given um, even in their uh, pro- provisional measures order. They give yeah. a lot of uh, credence to, to uh, UN reports. Um, thank you, Aisha. Thank you very much for that. I think that's uh, we, we were able to, to look at this question, really um, you know, ask the difficult questions when it comes to the argument or the allegation of genocide. Um, uh, we'll, we'll continue our series uh, on, on the Gaza uh, conflict and uh, have more analysis with you soon. Thank you.